the only idea was uh, make money. It's, it's a beautiful idea always. We are talking about thousands of spins here. Gonzalo's calculations show that on each individual roulette wheel, certain numbers come up more frequently than others. This is the bias. Let me show you how I set up the simulation. The computer simulation shows that each wheel favors as many as a dozen numbers and turns others into likely losers. These here are the positives, these are the negatives. Gonzalo assigns each number of value depending on whether it hits more or less frequently than the norm. Do you see it? I see it. I still don't believe it. The higher the total positive value of all the numbers, the stronger the bias of that wheel and the better the odds that Gonzalo will win. It is our advantage and we have doubled it in our favor. If Gonzalo can figure out the bias for each wheel in a casino, he could make millions, as long as the casino doesn't catch on to what he's doing. The casinos have no idea, do they? <laughs> no, they don't. But we haven't made any money yet either, so don't get too excited. Biased wheel players are not cheaters. They are taking advantage of, a, of, a, of the normal wear of a, of a uh, roulette wheel. Although Gonzalo's scheme is not illegal, it will give him an edge over the casino. And the one thing casinos don't like is anyone they suspect of playing with an advantage. That's when they'll use any excuse or method to kick someone out, or worse. Gonzalo is willing to take the risk. But before he can start winning the millions he dreams of, he needs even more data. It's still not enough. We need, we need more spins. Uh, 20, maybe 30,000. The more data, the larger the sampling, the more accurate the results. Gonzalo needs to send a team of players to the Casino Gran Madrid, each working six hours a night for two weeks. Then he'll have collected enough winning numbers to know if he's right. He turns to a large and trusted source of manpower, his family. Los Pelayos, my family, that is who I count on. I have been an artist all my life, so I will give them the chance to be artists, only with chips and numbers and many, many pesetas. If you trust me and trust the computer and bet only the numbers I tell you, if you follow the rules, if you are patient and think in terms of weeks, months, never tonight or even tomorrow, you will make a lot of money and live a life very few young people can afford. It was a strange world. A world where we didn't belong. We have always been basically in the cultural world. Music, film, etc. So we were a little confused. Gonzalo hopes Ivan, his daughter Vanessa, and his nephews Guillermo and Marcos agree to interrupt their university studies for such a mission. Some of us were studying economics, others law. I was studying philosophy. Hey, textbooks and grades, casinos and cash. Come on, the university isn't going anywhere. It will be like an all expenses paid vacation. But what about casino security? They're not just going to let us do this. Sure, sure, we have to keep our system a secret, but it's all perfectly legal, so what can they really do? And you think this will work in other casinos? I believe there is no such thing as a perfect roulette wheel. They all have their weaknesses which can be discovered and, and beaten. And there are wheels to be beaten in Paris, in Venice, in Bahamas, in Rio, <laughs> and who knows, someday in Las Vegas. So, who wants to make Los Pelayos rich and famous? Rich, yes. Maybe famous isn't the <laughs> <laughs> Gonzalo was not the first person to try and get rich. Among the first was Joseph Jaggers, a British mechanical engineer. In 1873, he hired six clerks to secretly note the winning numbers at six wheels in Monte Carlo's Beaux-Arts Casino. After five days, Jaggers played the nine most frequent winning numbers at one of the wheels and went home with more than $300,000, a sizable fortune then. Jaggers became legendary as the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo. At the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo. 
But Jagger's feat is not easily imitated. Perhaps even more important than an ingenious betting system is the discipline required to implement it. A discipline that Gonzalo will strictly enforce on his team of first-time gamblers, making sure they know all the rules. Don't play anything but roulette, and don't play for fun. Don't talk to anyone about our system. Do not tip the croupiers. We're running a business, not a charity. There's still one final obstacle before they can hit the casino floor. Obtaining a bankroll large enough to carry them through a losing streak. It was a time of crisis. We didn't have a lot of money. Gonzalo sells one of his few remaining assets. The rights to a wildlife documentary he made in Africa. It's barely enough to get them started. We took some uh, money to, to live, but uh, we, we put a bankroll apart for just for playing. $2,200 approximately. But ironically, one that also gives them an advantage. Their small bets will help them blend in with the crowd, with less chance of being detected. Los Paleos are finally ready to begin their assault as a team on the roulette wheels inside the Casino Gran Madrid. They're impatient to see if their system will pan out. But even if it does, can this bunch of amateurs keep it a secret and stay hidden from the eyes of casino security? <laughs> <laughs>